Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the first video in IB Biology Topic 8, Metabolism, Cell Respiration and Photosynthesis, where we will be looking at metabolism, enzyme catalysis, enzyme inhibition and bioinformatics. Before watching this video series, ensure you watch our Topic 2 video series, which includes metabolism and metabolic reactions. In the first video of that series, we introduced metabolism as the complex web of all enzyme-catalyzed reactions in an organism. However, at higher level, you need to appreciate the complexities of metabolism in more detail. Specifically, that metabolism consists of many different reactions. These are organized into specific sequences known as metabolic pathways. For example, to convert reactant A to Z, Reactant A likely reacts to form reactant B, which in turn reacts to produce reactant C, and so on, until reactant Z is reached. These stages are usually a chain of reactions that ensure the pathway can only continue once each stage is completed. However, some metabolic pathways form cycles. In these, the end product starts the next stage of the pathway. Several key examples of cyclical metabolic pathways will be covered in this video series, but we will start by focusing on the enzymes that enable metabolic pathways. As introduced in the third video of our IB Biology Topic 2 video series, enzymes are proteins which speed up the rate of chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy for the reaction to take place. They do so by bonding to substrates, complementary in shape and charge, at their active site. Doing so enables a transition state and facilitates the conversion to a product, a process known as enzyme catalysis. Whilst we introduce the specificity of shape and charge, higher level students must understand the two concepts by which this specificity is defined, the lock and key and induced fit mechanisms. We will look at each one now. The lock and key mechanism states that an active site forms an exact fit with the substrate. For example, if we were to represent the substrate with a pentagon, the enzyme would have a pentagonal shaped active site, thus forming exact matches. The induced fit mechanism states that the enzyme moulds to form an exact fit with the substrate upon successful collision. Continuing our example of a pentagonal substrate, the enzyme may have a hexagonal active site. However, Upon binding of the enzyme substrate complex, the active site would form a pentagonal shape and thus an exact fit. Whilst both mechanisms are viable, the induced fit mechanism is more widely accepted as the correct approach. For your IB Biology higher level exam, you must also understand how the interaction between enzymes and substrates can be inhibited, known as enzyme inhibition. This process is necessary to control metabolic pathways and prevent unnecessary production. It can occur in two ways, competitive and non-competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition, the inhibitor molecule competes for the active site with the substrate. It is therefore similar in shape and charge to the substrate, and when it binds to the active site of the enzyme, it prevents binding of the substrate and thus inhibits the desired reaction. An example commonly tested in the exam is the conversion of succinate to fumarate. Typically, this occurs in a one-stage reaction. However, when the competitive inhibitor malonate is present, it forms a malonate enzyme complex to prevent the succinate from binding to the active site, thus inhibiting fumarate formation. In non-competitive inhibition, the inhibitor molecule binds to the allosteric site. This is a second binding site on an enzyme, which when bound to causes a change in conformation of the active site. This therefore prevents the active site from binding to the substrate entirely, inhibiting the reaction indirectly. An example to learn is the inhibition of the conversion of triose phosphate to pyruvate by pyruvate kinase. Here, alanine binds to the allosteric site on pyruvate kinase and prevents triose phosphate from binding to pyruvate kinase. It is worth noting that when the end product of a metabolic pathway acts as a non-competitive inhibitor to the initial reaction, this can be termed end product inhibition. 
For your exam, you need to learn an example. The conversion of threonine to isoleucine. Threonine undergoes a five-stage reaction, each utilising an intermediary and its own enzyme, threonine dehydratase. The final stage produces isoleucine as a product, which then binds to the allosteric site of threonine dehydratase in reaction 1, thus acting as a non-competitive inhibitor, preventing the conversion of threonine and so shutting down the pathway. So, you now understand enzyme inhibition, but what does this mean for the rate of enzyme-catalyzed reactions? You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.